Ah, yes. Where were we? Hmm, that's right. The boys were about to get into a scuffle with some bandits. I can't quite remember how that went. I'll do my best to get it all right, though. Oh boy, here I go killing again. Oh, Atlas got a 19 plus two. Uh, hold on. Uh, I rolled a sweet four, so that's seven. That's sweet, sweet fitting. Right. Wait, hold on. What did you roll, Devin? 19 plus my dex, right? Okay, yeah, that's some high dex. Just checking. Just trying to track. Okay, um, Henry uh, not coming in with the, the heat. Coming into the three. Told you, Dad. <laughs> Stay out of this fire. Let me set the stage for this commotion. Um, you guys are uh, marching orders. You're in a you're in a tunnel that's uh, ten feet wide, so you guys can definitely go side by side. Um, but you were walking line by line, so it's uh, Atlas, it's um, Rowan, it's Chris, and then it's Henry in the back. And um, at the mouth of this tunnel. Um, <clears throat> is three robed figures uh, <clears throat> kind of like blocking the entrance and um, you know they look humanoid and Atlas is definitely the first to go so they're just like right at the mouth like when yeah. we're coming in yep they're so like heading like, your direction for sure how close? Uh, I mean from where you are 15 feet sweet uh, so just those three guys we see immediately yep so uh, let me be clear, that if yet. you like, yeah, you can't see in the cave, but if you like run up to meet them, they're going to have you like surrounded. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to uh, ready an action. Okay. Uh, when they move to within a striking distance, because I'm going to pull out my great axe, okay. and they are hostile, I, I perceive that they're hostile. Like if they are in fact bad guys, I don't know what we would do to work that out. Okay, that's fair. That's a good clarification. Um, <laughs> we're running away. First thing we want to give you gold. <laughs> and then like somebody yeah. like takes a dad. No, I, so I, I guess so. Ready in action to perceive if if they move within striking distance of the great axe, and they are perceived to be baddies or to attack me. Let's do that to attack me or my party. Sure. I attack them. That's fair. Okay. Uh. All right. Good. You do that. Um. Chris, what you gonna do, friend? Uh, is there anything in the immediate area that I can use for cover? You can use a uh, ghost or a uh, atlas. Sounds great. I'll hide behind ghost. Uh, I mean, uh, so like you can't because you'd be sharing the same seat as, same space as um, Rowan. You, I mean, technically you'd hide behind Rowan or Henry, right? Like. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'll just kind of. How far away are they from me? Uh, so you, 25 feet. Okay, great. Um, so whichever one has, uh, the most, uh, distinguished nose, I'm going to cast you on them. I don't care. You can't see their face from here. Uh, you pick, pick, one. Just pick one. Left, right, middle. Uh, uh, ooh, I'm gonna go with left. Okay. Uh, Carla. the one on the left, I'm going to cast Frostbite. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, for giggles, remind me what that does. Uh, you cause numbing frost to form on one creature that you can see within range. Uh, the target must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 1d6 cold damage and has disadvantage on the next weapon attack roll it makes before the end of its next turn. Cool. Uh, yeah, just remind me about that um, disadvantage piece. And he's going to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, 19. That'll do it. Uh, so he still takes half damage? No, he takes nothing. He takes nothing. Oh, it's uh, all or nothing. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm not super familiar with that one. Uh, it's it's very... from Elemental E. All right, yeah, that's good. that's your back. All righty <laughs> then. On. Oh, and I'm gonna use my calm response. Okay. Um. Henry, make a wall. Go stand next to Ghost. And he says, uh, "Got it." And like holds up his hammer. So the one that you tried to get icy icy, 
um, he's actually going to return the favor in the sense that he's going to simply cast Firebolt in your direction. Ali, Bumbaye, Ali. Oh shit, I gotta reroll. It's a fucking four. Uh, 15. Doesn't do it. Uh, so he throws the fireball, and as you're like, Henry, you're like, you like move, and the fireball just flies past your head. And Henry, like, as he's like, you got it, does one of those shit and puts both his hands over his head and ducks down, and it like fills up the hallway, but uh, nobody is harmed. Um, next in the lineup is the one on the far right, and he's actually going to, uh, so he puts both his hands together, uh, like, almost like he's going to pray, and then, uh, three more of him appear, Hmm. and as he moves, they move very similar to the way he does, but I think he steps up to the mouth of the, the entrance, blocking off one of the five foot spots, no, 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 not like, he doesn't move 15 feet towards you, uh, but he moves five feet up to block off a spot. And his, uh, the other versions that he summoned do the same thing. Okay, well, the middle guy, this guy, like, he runs straight up to you, Devin, or Atlas, and you're going to do your thing. Okay, uh, so I'm going to attack using my great axe. Okay. A little roll here. That's a 15. Uh, wow. Yeah, that does it. Oh, good. Cause okay. Uh, so I'm gonna roll a 1d12. This is two hands, two hand weapon. Yep. Uh, it's five plus three. That's eight damage. Whoa. <laughs> so eviscerate. <laughs> you uh you like as he's like running up. Um, you you see the that he has a shield and a sword, and you swing baseball style, and he like goes to shield block you, but he doesn't anticipate for how much taller you are than he is. Six six. And so you're able to like get a good cut across his chest, and just blood goes everywhere. Um, you notice that it's not red; it's uh, a more amber color. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it definitely, you put a dent. Um, his thing uh, is he's going to take his shield and hit you with it. Probably. Uh, actually, so when you cut, like he gets so off guard, he goes to hit you. Um, but he like loosens his grip on the straps of the shield and it actually goes flying, um, forward instead. Um, Rowan, make a dexterity saving throw for me, please. Oh, God. Captain America, you bro. Not on purpose. Super roll the one. <laughs> Rowan? Rowan. Roll a dexterity Rowan. saving throw. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, you're right behind. He's over here laughing like, <laughs> sucks for damn it. <laughs> I'm going to eat a shield to the face. That's a 21, because I have proficiency in Yeah, so I think, throws. I think, um... Instead of dodging it, you kind of like, um, like frisbee. You know how people do the frisbee catch where they catch the rim of it and bring it down. Um, you do that except for you don't grab it. You kind of like scoop it to the ground as it comes right into your face. Um, That's true. Charlie Murphy played frisbee golf a lot. I learned some technique from him. Yeah. Uh, your turn. <laughs> uh, Rowan. All right. Um. I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery against that guy. <laughs> what are you going to say? Like, nice try, you idiot. <laughs> Simple. To, just, like, so dumb. Uh, okay, so he, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is a Wisdom second throw? Yes. Okay, cool. So he's going to raise... Oh, uh, he's not very wise, as it were. Uh, I don't think a, a three is going to cut it. No. Uh, okay, so what happens to him? Um, he's got disadvantage on his next attack roll, and I get to do 1d4 damage. Okay, cool. Uh, you notice um, <clears throat> that his like hood is now off from the like the scuffle, uh, and he's a human, uh, but he doesn't have any hair. 
and his skin is like an ashen gray, and his eyes are a glowing amber. Mm hmm. Well, it was a four max damage. Damn. Yeah, work that level boys. one swings. Yep. <laughs> yeah. mm. And I'm pretty sure I'd like I've got this difficulty on point. Um, so I think we're gonna be okay. Level one's a dangerous game to play. You either like oh, everything's yeah, yeah, too yeah. powerful or it's too weak. Um, so I think we're on point. Yeah, crit by a gerblin, so you're dead. Uh, okay, so now it's Henry's. Uh, well, unless you want to. Uh, do I'm else. not done. Yeah, I was gonna say. I have a bonus action bardic inspiration onto Atlas. Okay, cool. Uh, so what do you what do you sing to Atlas? I think is very important to. Uh, I'm gonna sing him a sweet song about his mom. Mm, I love this sweet James. Right into my ears. I, I would love to hear it. Yeah, let's hear it. Oh, I mean, I'm sure you would love to, but it's like a sweet whisper into only his ear. Oh, okay, so just, just me, me and Dwayne will turn our, our volume off. You just say that. <laughs> so just for the listeners at <laughs> home. Sing that little yeah. It's it's very much Danzig's mother. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Mother. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. He like leans into whisper. Oh, and Alice leans back. Mother. What would you say, mother? Okay, you're right. Okay, uh, yeah. so now it's... Are you, I'm sorry, are you done? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm cool. fired, by the way. So, uh, uh, well, I mean, you, you have um, a bardic inspiration dice, but are you inspired emotionally? That's different. Uh, so Henry, like, steps up shoulder to shoulder uh, with you, Atlas, and he's going to take a swing at the guy with his uh, blacksmithing. Ooh, not 20! Um, so, I mean, he's, he, you told him to stay back. Daddy's right. So Daddy was right. Daddy walks up and, um, just like with the fury of a man looking for his woman, like swings that hammer down and just the guy's face takes it full blown and just goes down. This could be a different podcast with that description. That's yeah, why I really gave it to that guy's face. That's why I was very, <laughs> very... <laughs> Very careful about the wording. Um, so he smashes yeah, him in the face blow. with the hammer, and the guy goes down, uh, never to awaken again. Mm. And as he does that, Henry looks at you and says, Maybe you should stay behind. Damn. <laughs> uh, call, call, call in response uh, to that call, I will respond, Holy shit! Henry's a badass! <laughs> He kind of looks back at you, like, with the, one of those, like, uh, yeah. He winks, there's an audible, ting, ding, and then nobody it, smiles. It's just like, ding. I've never hit anybody before, there's so much blood, why is it not red, that's so weird, oh my god, oh my god, I just killed a guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so. Well, yeah, I just want to knock him down, I just let him go to sleep. Alright, Atlas, <laughs> it's your turn. Um. Okay, so he's he's just said that to me, and I go, maybe you should leave. I have terrible <laughs> comebacks. <laughs> so, what did you say? Hold on, I can't. Maybe you should leave. It's just the same thing he said to me, or like he said, maybe you should stay. And he's just like, he knows it's a dumb comeback. Yeah, so, no, he, no response. Super great. Super call good. no response. Got got in one. So I'm going to go attack that one that shot the fireball at uh, Christoph earlier. Okay. I'm not passing through it because if I'm correct, there's like the three shadows and then two guys left, but none of them have moved. So um, I won't go attack. So you want to, the, the one that, so you'll actually have to move through his attack of uh, opportunity space, but you won't exit it. What, what will end up happening is you'll have the guy with the images on your right hand side and then you'll have Firebolt guy directly in front of you. So you'll literally have one in front of you and one on your right if you do that. Yeah. Actually, let me just... That's like going closest to me then. That makes sense. So you run up to the guy with the images and strike? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, you, you need to roll a d20. Not for your attack. <laughs> just roll a d20. Oh, Okay. You know that thing that happens when sometimes I open the app and it, it's a uh, oh just trade D twenty is thirteen. Okay. Uh, Without any uh, modifiers. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I did not pull up the spell. I have to roll it. So 
So he'll eat his dick. Um, so yeah, so you run up, and you you like see the guy. And I uh, I I think you kind of two hand swing down. So inspired by your father dropping a guy in one hit, you two hand swing down on this guy, and as you do that, the image just dissipates right in front of you. Um, I don't think I have a bonus action to do anything right now, so. I am good to go. Cool. Uh, Kristoff, what would you like to do? Yeah, so uh, we're doing a little song of fire and ice, me and this fucking firebolt guy. Uh, so I'm going to give him a little a frostbite. Okay. Uh, and he does constitution. constitution. Yeah, all right, cool. Uh, I don't know. That's no. He fails. Sweet. So, yeah, he, he gets covered in some frost, and it hurts him real bad, and then he's going to take 1d6 damage. Which is a six! Uh, yeah, so you, um... It's, what is it called? Chilling Touch? Uh, Frostbite. Frostbite. Uh, so you cast Frostbite, and uh, very quickly, uh, Ice kind of uh, swiftly spirals through the air, and he moves to dodge it. But in the way that he does, it, it wraps back around on him. And he, like, takes a knee once that hits, and he has disadvantage on his next attack. Is that what it is? Uh, unfortunately, I'm a bad and did not uh, choose my target wisely. I was just mad that this guy threw a firebolt at me. Um, it's his next weapon attack, so oh, probably okay. gonna probably gonna sling a firebolt, not a weapon attack. Will be fine. So that guy, uh, who's super in pain and super covered in chills and icicles, is gonna throw a firebolt at you. Feeling banjo for later. Uh, I don't think a ten does it though. Not going to make the gravy. Not going to make them cut the mustard or any other food references. Okay, so he throws another fireball, and your team now expecting it. Kind of like all of you move to the side. And it just, like, flies to the cavern again. Um, the guy with the images, uh, Devin, what you notice is all three of them begin to uh, put their hands together and form a fireball. And he's going to cast Firebolt on your face. On your face. And that's gonna hit. Um, might kill you. Is it the nat twenty? Um, we'll see. Oh no, you have tons of HP. Wink. <laughs> uh, um, you take nine fire damage. Woo! As he like, so like, I think it's just the combination of all the images together, right? Um, you just take through four fireballs straight to the face. Three fireballs. You've been to the face. sufficiently shadow clone jutsu. Yes. Fireball. Uh, oh, we own zero rights to that. That's very much a Naruto franchise. Oops, too late now. It's game. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's his bag. Uh, next up is Rowan. Well, I am going to cast Vicious Mockery on the Fireball, motherfucker. Uh, they both cast Fireball? The, like, the one who's continuous, not the... Actually, yeah, I guess it would make sense to maybe get rid of one of the Shadow Clones. So I'm going to admit that guy. Okay. Um, you do that, he has to roll a die. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so you cast that, and uh, it super kills a uh yeah what does it say? the attack mirror attack images not the trademark destroyed. shadow clones yeah i'm gonna say that it still fucking hears vicious mockery i guess i could let it roll a wisdom saving throw does it it failed super sweet yeah so you uh you say some shit what do you say to the the mirror image well i don't know it's a mirror image right you don't know that, yeah. So what do you say to the guy? Like, I can tell how strong you are by needing three or four of yourself to fight the three or four of us. And, um, <laughs> so yeah, the another image pops and disintegrates in magic -y goodness. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to do with your turn? I would like to help a brother out and cast Healing Word on Atlas. Okay, yeah, you can do that. 
Give me a sweet heals. Uh, it's a five. I heal you for five. Not more than I had. Uh, did you add your spellcasting modifier to it? Yeah, yeah it's it a, yeah, I don't, well, yeah. I don't. Okay, cool. Alright, good. Yeah, it's only a D4. No, I know it's D4, but I, some spell... Not everybody remembers to add modifiers to spells when it's appropriate. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, <clears throat> you put your hand on Atlas, I think. Or no, you uh, sing him some sweet... Some sweet Three songs music. about his mom. Yeah, some more songs. It says, Mom! I never meant to hurt you. Ghosty's mom has <laughs> got it going on. There you go. Uh... Um, yeah, so you get some sweet hit points back in your hopper, and uh, Henry is up next, and he just runs straight up to the guy who's kind of kneeling and takes a swing at him. Uh, I don't know that that's going to do it. Um, no, it doesn't. So he comes up and like swings with the hammer, uh, and the guy like stumbles backwards in fright, uh, and Henry misses his attack. Uh Atlas, it's your turn. Top of the lineup. I want to go to the guy that Henry just attacked. Um, Can I do that without going through a attack of from? No, I think the nearest do, guy. Well, this the nearest the guy is the mirror image guys. Do I? But do I know that? Like, no, you just know there's two discussion? of them. I mean, like you assume there's mirror images because you've seen them pop, but you don't know yeah, which one's the real one. Is there any way I can roll perception to know? You sure can attempt that? Yeah. Is it like a bonus action? Is what I'm asking, no, it's a super action to do that. Then I'm not doing that. I'm just attacking whatever's close. <laughs> I was going to say, you can do whatever you want. You can uh, do whatever you like. Okay, you let me just attack like. the closest uh, thing. Hold on, i got to roll a uh, d20 and see if you... Uh, and I've actually been doing the spell incorrectly um, because once you roll a d20, you then have to make an attack against its AC. Um, but that's okay. A little 16 if you need me to roll his earlier uh, roll. Uh, roll 11. All right, so uh, roll. I'm sorry, you rolled a d20. Are you earlier or just now? Just now. Okay. Yeah, you hit it and pop it for sure. Okay. So you swing again, and this time it um, destroys. Like you go sideways, and the guy that is real kind of gets that nervous face now that he's all alone and he's seen everybody chopping through his magical mystical clones um, okay so <laughs> the uh that leaves next to the lineup of chris uh, i'm gonna continue my song of fire and ice throwing out a ray of frost to this dude i've been dealing with okay yeah you do that That is going to be a 15 to hit. Uh, that super does it. So you cast the Ray of Frost, and it strikes him dead in the chest, and he kills him. Uh, anything else you want to do? Uh, no, that's that's what I wanted to do. So Yeah, yeah okay. perfect. Uh, the guy with the, the, the now lone spellcaster... Um, Seeing that you have just murdered his friend is going to strike you. I actually um, forgot to do my call and response. Uh, oh, I'm sure. going to call out to the enemy that I struck with my ray of frost. Hey, chill out. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> nailed nice. it. Yes, whole podcast one. Yep. <laughs> this die is the only D20 I use in the future. Uh, I'm going. He's going to hit you with a fireball. Uh, and he's gonna hit you twice. If you roll the crit on a, uh, you take seven fire damage. You do, yeah, super you. Oh <laughs> no, sweet summer child! I am a tiefling. I will not be taking seven fire damage. You uh, can have uh, three of that then. So he uh, fireball specials uh, one right down the line, just pissed off that you took down his friend, and uh, it hits you, and it is softly pattered across your uh, infernal self. But three damage is still off. quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't want him to know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, you don't, you don't know. <sighs> uh, yeah, um, it's uh, Rowan's turn. Um... I will 
move up against that uh, the last guy and make a, just a melee attack. Uh, okay, so the way the the way it's set, it's a uh, Henry, uh, Henry, Henry, uh, bad guy, Devin. So you can get up diagonal, and take a strike. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I'll go that way. Yeah, you do that. And it's super not gonna hit because I don't have enough to make a five work. Yeah, I know. So you run up. Uh, what is your weapon of choice? Rapier. Um, so you run up and you go to poke this guy and he sees it coming very much and kind of like slides his shoulder down and mm. uh, is able to dodge quite easily um, but Henry seeing that you guys have failed quite ho horrifically uh, in murdering this guy he's going to swing his hammer on him he is also going to miss this guy's very much like Matrix flexing all of these attacks like anytime they come in he's just ready for it but now it's Atlas's turn. Oh no, it's, uh, excuse me. Yeah, it's Atlas's turn. Yep. Call response. <laughs> I heard Christoph say a cool thing earlier, and I don't realize that it doesn't play with me as well. And I say, why don't you chill out? And I just two hammer him. Like, I mean, just two handed <laughs> axe. Uh, okay, roll on attack. Let me, let me roll. I think uh, as you're attacking, Henry says, I, I don't know that that plays. That's a 12, but I'm going to use the Bardic Inspiration. Use my D6 to add on to it. Okay. Which is a 6, so it makes it an 18. And actually, uh, so, yeah, so 18 total. Uh, yeah, we'll say that hits. All right. Uh, D12, that's a 5 plus 2. That's 8 damage. You cleave this man into two pieces. You horizontally take him apart. <laughs> yes! Oh, horizontally? Horizontally, vertically would be better. I want a hot dog. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, that's not that's not how this works. He baseball style. Because um, mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, I don't know. Did you specify that you were overhand coming down from the top? Yeah, yeah, I would. Be oh, okay, overhand yeah, me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that even more. Um, yeah, so you vertically cut him in twain, and about halfway down to his wet waist, you kind of like stop and have to like wedge it out. Oh gosh. <laughs> um. You've defeated my uh, triple bandit. Do -do 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 -do. Puzzle. Yeah. Um, bandit. <laughs> yeah, so they're super dead. Uh, so, Henry, being the good DM NPC and reminding you guys how to play DD, because maybe we should see if they have anything on them. Yeah, I want to yeah. super check the bodies. Uh, that's <laughs> good that you guys thought so well to do that. Um, thanks, DM. Uh, Guys, wine. Set the pace for the fucking adventure. Put Here's some... my father. He should be doing this stuff. My dad. Yeah, His maybe he'll is. take the loot. Teach me. Uh, okay, cool. So, uh, you find a rolled up scroll. You find a level one spell scroll. Uh, who would like it? Me, me, me. Okay. <laughs> I'll take I'll that. Fight you for it. I do spells. Okay. Um. Yeah, man. Let me see what you got. Okay, roll. All right. You find a purify food and drink spell scroll. Yay! Thanks, DM. Can uh, he use that on dead bodies? Purify food and drink. Oh gosh. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they're food for animals. <laughs> It doesn't say human food. <laughs> you could use purified food and drink on a dead body if you wanted. I mean, but I don't think he's a cannibal, so I don't know that. I'm um, all non-magical no, food and drink within a five-foot radius. Let's not let me make those decisions. Yeah. For my character. <laughs> oh, God, your, your characters are gonna really awful flaw. Yeah, yeah, flaw <laughs> is a cannibal. Yeah, is it flaw or is it feature? Um, okay, so you guys kind of roll into the room, and uh, I assume I don't want to speak yep. for you. Okay, uh, and you see a, a table. Um, you see a table, some papers on it, and um, some. That's about it. I read the doorway, I'm assuming. Uh, so there's there's a lot. It's a, like a lot of papers. It's um, too much for you to like deal with now, but you can turn, like look through them later. I put them in the roll those. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, Sound 
my thoughts. Don't call me um, Okay, cool. Um, sorry, I'm like going through my notes because uh, it's not how I expected you guys to play, but you know. Uh, I mean, was there any other way? That's true. Uh, so you guys make your murder, way through a few windy tunnels and find yourself in a 60 foot diameter room. Uh, the room is empty bar a large 20 foot tall set of double doors. The two doors span high into the room. On the right hand door there's a figure of um, nine onyx colored plates with crimson letters embossed on them. In the middle of the room you can see Teresa is kneeling by a man in chainmail armor. His face ashen gray with crimson glowing orbs for eyes. His head bald and across his back is a large two-handed blade. Uh, he says to you... It's about time, Henry. I want you to make this blade, and he pulls out his two-handed sword, into a powerful weapon like you did for the royal family. And if you don't, he puts the blade down at um, Teresa's neck. I think we understand which way this goes. And uh, Henry immediately responds and says, I've never made, um, excuse me, I've never made a weapon for the royal family. My weapons are decorative. I do not make weapons for war. What would you guys like to do? <laughs> Quick. I pull out a spear and I throw it at his head. Okay. Roll a range attack. I sneak around the back. I say, I say, Bart, inspire me now. No, you don't get oh. to play that. Oh my okay. gosh. Oh. That's a su <laughs> super it's a aggressive. Oh. Do, I, do I get a, is it attack? Do I get to add? It's a ranged attack, it? yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, oh, hold on. Jesus Christ, Devin, that's so that's risky. A, it's a 20 with javelins, bro. No, that's fine, brother. I don't know how to tell you that, like, your mom's sitting in front of him with a sword at her neck. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, uh, sorry, let me resolve some things um, before I resolve that attack. Roll a stealth check. Yeah, you got a boss. You yeah. roll? You no, rolling? not you. He, he yeah. made a comment. You're very he, stealthily. Yeah. You threw a spear Throwing stealthily. Throwing a javelin directly at his fucking face as soon as you saw him. Sneak him. Uh, that is going to be a 16, mon frere. Uh, yeah, I think, um, I think you're good with that. Uh, yeah, you're fine. Um, so you, like, go off to the right-hand side, we'll say? So there was, like, there was, like, a big door and, like, some plates and stuff? That's on the, all the way on the opposite side of the room. Like, you're not going to yeah, really make that wrong. in a sprint. Okay, cool. So, yeah, skirting, skirting the edge of the room, I assume? Skirt. Okay, okay so you make 30 down. feet around or so. So you're about halfway mm -hmm. on the edge of the room. Um... Devin, you rolled a 20. I'm fairly certain that's going to hit. Uh, super does. Roll damage for me. Oh, gosh. What's oh, that one? It's just a spear. Oh, golly. Just a spear. Uh, 3 plus 3, 6 damage. Okay. Uh, let me... Oh, Slater. Okay. Uh, everybody roll initiative. Hey, guys. It's Dwayne, the DM here. I uh, just want to say thanks for listening. Uh, it's been a really cool thing, the amount of downloads and the listens we've had. I also want to say that you can find us on Facebook at Lawful Stupid and Instagram at Lawful Stupid. As well as on our Facebook, you can actually buy dice if you want to help support us. You can buy a set of dice and they'll get sent to you and then you'll put a little money in our pocket so we can buy websites and do other cool stuffs. So thanks and enjoy the rest of the show. Can you tell me where this hits him? Because there, is there like time for him? Like if I hit him in the face, I don't know where it would hit him. But I mean, you throw it and it like wings him in his arm. Um, just kind of like, like strace. Yeah, it like puts a big gash. It, it doesn't okay. um, like fucking headshot him. Nice try though. Is it is it time for? I mean, is there enough time for? No, it's initiative roll. Like, okay, like Let's go. You got super Un unnatural twenty. A seventeen. Alright. Uh, uh, Those are thirteen. All good fucking rolls, man. 
Uh, Henry needs to roll. Henry's super going first. He wasted a nice one. Maybe he just loves his wife that much. Oh no. All of his rolls are nat 20s right now because he <laughs> yeah, loves. No shit, yeah. Uh, so Henry um, does his thing and just rushes straight up to this guy and takes a swing at him with his hammer. Uh, super going to hit him. And he's going to deal um, three bludgeoning damage to this guy. Um, and so he runs up and, and strikes him in the ribs and kind of says... Uh, let her go! And next it's gonna be Chris's turn. I'm conflicted as a player um, because I wanna help this fight, I wanna help this lady, and I wanna save the day like a big big hero. And I also really love puzzles and it looks like there's one over there. So, I'm going to cast Puzzle solved. <laughs> no, I'm gonna cast, cast, no. I'm going to cast, I'm I'm cast Frostbite okay. on Dick uh, Cheese Magoo. Yeah, he has to do a constitution saving throw. Uh, yeah, I assume your spellcaster modifier is lower than that. Um, oh, he was a 15? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, it should be 13 at the highest right now. Uh, maybe yeah. 14 at the most. It on. is exactly 13. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you do that, and he kind of uh, it hits him, but it kind of like melts off of his chainmail armor. He's just kind of chilly. Um. So he's going to. Sure. He kind of like uh shoves Teresa to the ground, and turning his attention to Henry, he's going to swing his two-handed sword against him. And he's going to hit Henry for oops, eight points of damage. And Ow. so he like brings his blade across Henry's chest. And in the same swift motion, he uses a uh, multi-attack to hit Henry again with the hilt of his blade in a quick like reflex strike. Uh, and Henry goes to the ground and takes another damage. Um, Devin, where you are, you can tell the your dad is pretty worse for wear. Um, when he goes to the ground, you can just tell that like that took a whole lot out of him, taking those hits. And that's his bag. And next is uh, Rowan's turn. Got to cast Vicious Mockery against the bro. Okay, uh, he does a wisdom saving throw. What do you say, Alex? Uh, he's good. <laughs> good, yeah. like it hits or? Yeah. What are your it? words? Let me let me hear what you say. Like, look at the fucking small sack on this man attacking a poor old lady. Uh, <laughs> he uh looks at you and is not faced by this because he succeeded. And then I'll give a bardic inspiration to Atlas. Through songs of revenge. What are, what are you singing? What? You don't have to sing it. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just love the idea of you titling out your uh, songs. Oh, it's got to be... Um, he killed my father. That's a song for him. That I just wrote. <laughs> that I wrote. Okay. Uh, all right. Sure. Sure. And yeah, you have a bardic inspiration die. And it's your turn. All right, so showing is the sound the great axe makes when it comes out. Okay. How close is he to me? Uh, I mean, he's like 15, 20 feet away. Sweet. I will advance, and I will um, jump up in the air and try to cleave him in twain. Okay. Like, I'm not stopping at the hips this time. Like, we're, hips don't lie. We're going all the way through those buggers. <laughs> okay. Uh, make a weapon attack. Uh, it's a 12, but I'll use the, the die to uh, okay. get the d6 on it. Oh, no, I won't. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Because it's actually... No, I won't. Yes, I will. No, I won't. No, no yes, I, won't. I won't. No, I won't. Oh, you know what? I'm 17. two tenths. Plus five. It's a 17. Oh, you didn't add your modifier? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's super hits. Uh, roll damage, please. Ooh, 10 plus 3. 13. 
Uh, you super cleave him in two pieces. <laughs> we did it! Call oh, response. Yeah. I look back and go, twins. <laughs> yeah, so you Response. sleep him and raised eyebrow to <laughs> disgust. I, 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 I check his pockets. Search, I, search, I search both of them. Why don't you search your mom, dog? Make sure she's okay. I'll search his body for pictures. Uh You find, you find uh, the bag of gold that Henry uh, mentioned that he lost. And it's I say nothing about that. It's got, uh, I mean... Henry, Henry's Henry's on the ground, so know, he's not going to roll a perception check. The other players, you guys can super roll perception checks against sli his sleight of hand since he's trying to hide it. Yep, oh, doing that. Yeah. Sleight of hand, 19. Yeah, perception is 5. <laughs> My perception's 19. Reroll. Uh, modifier. Well, yeah, reroll. I like reroll better. Oh, I was going to be like, I have a plus 5 to perception. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what do I do that? Uh, that is a 19? Oh, 16. Oh, okay. So, yeah, um, you notice that he's rush rumbling around in the body, but you don't see him actually loot anything. Mm. Well, so I don't remember it's in check. And Henry, are you okay? He, like, gets up, and he's, like, Can bleeding pretty badly, and he's like, yeah, I have uh, seen worse. No, but that sucked. <laughs> Seen worse, but not by a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I go, well, uh, I, I'm not gonna give you the potion just yet. Let's try to hang on to it in uh, case we're running anything else. That's okay. I uh... now check Teresa. Uh, Mommy. she she like gets up and she is like super pale face. She's like super frightened. Would you like to say anything to your mom? <laughs> yeah, would you like to say anything? Just looking at her in the eyes while she's traumatized by this. Uh, why did they take you? Uh, I, I guess uh, because they wanted Henry to make a sword like he said when he had a sword against my throat. Why did they send someone so weak? I mean, it was one attack and he was down. Um... Pretty sure father banged him up as well. But yeah, you did such a good job, son. I want to take that sword that he had too, by the way. Okay, you now have a... Um, you now have a two-handed... Um, I'm sorry, you now have a long sword in your possession? Long sword? Yep. Awesome. Looking around, is there... Are there any... Like, is there another... Is this it? Of this, yeah. cave, this cave system? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's the door, the doors. Yeah, oh, puzzle time. I go for puzzle time. Okay, so can I say, all right, I think you guys should get out of here, Henry. If you want to stick with us, you can, but you either escort oh, Henry, her out. Like, catches Q with you, gets Teresa, and it's like, ah, see you back in town, Bell City. Super out of here. I want to give both of them a hug first. Uh, yeah, they do that. They they hug you affectionately. Uh, I just oh. wanted like the record show that. I take a moment from puzzle time. I break away from my puzzle desires to like look at you with just disdain. <laughs> Atlas? Yeah, this whole show of affection. Oh, okay. All right. Not my bag. Sure. No, that's fair. And I don't care because these hugs are great for me. Do I get any health back for the hugs? Um, no, absolutely not. Oh, okay. Thought I'd try. The power of love, not a real power. Yeah, that's true. Hey, no, a mother's love heals 1d10. That's in the rules. It's in the Dungeon Master's Guide. You may not have read it. Yeah, no. I, uh, you're right. I've never it's read it before. UA. I'm doing all this off the cuff first time. All right. So I, I guess, I say, boys, I guess this door looks pretty magnificent. Seems like we should uh, check it out. I would like nothing more than to just check this door right out. Okay. I mean, it's not standing out or anything. Uh, I say, uh, Rowan, I, I know you didn't sign up for this part. You would kind of have uh, come to the end of the road for the what, what I asked for your help, but I'm more than willing to carry on this mission with Kristoff, if you are. But oh, just know I, that I, you're not bound really, to me anymore. Thank you I, for your services. I never really signed up for anything more than coming to help you out. Seems like you still might need some help. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
Uh, yeah, so you guys want to walk up to the door and, and solve my door puzzle? I would love to. Okay, um... Cool beans. Yeah, so you walk up to the uh, double doors, and um, on the right-hand side, uh, there are nine onyx plates that form a uh, nine uh, three by three grid, uh, and in them is uh, crimson lettering. Uh, the top row, uh, from left to right, is the letter I. The middle row is I I the third row is three eyes um, the second row left to right is the letter I and the letter V with the um, middle being V the right plate in the middle row being a V I uh, the bottom row is a left to right V I I middle row V I, 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 and the last row being uh, I, X. And right below that in uh, golden lettering is uh, the letters X, V under it, separate from the nine plates mounted on the wall. I can only assume the puzzle here is we have to get these tiles in the appropriate order of Dwayne's favorite Final Fantasy games. Um, uh -huh. So, uh, okay. So, is the, the XV is in golden lettering? Yep. And it's under the nine plates. Is it is it a plate? Or is it just written there? It's well, it's so it's embossed. It's embossed lettering on the I door see. itself. Okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna venture a guess here, guys. Let me uh, I touch I X with my hand. Okay, you touch it. Does anything happen? Uh, it rattles a little bit. Okay, can I like push it? Is it like a button? Uh, no, it's not like a button. Um, but as you like force your hand around it, uh, the plate kind of like falls into your hand. Like it comes off the door into your hand. Hmm. Okay. So uh, now there's an empty space. On, okay, you put it back. Um. So the trick of it is, it's a Sudoku. Um. So we just have to make all the rows, top, bottom, left, right, equal fifteen. So if you'll excuse me while I math. What's a Sudoku? I'm still looking at the sword I picked up. <laughs> wow. They're looking at that door. <clears throat> and I'm just like, oh, man, it's so fun. It's having a great time. Okay, so... Lots of solid teamwork in this. Ooh, I, uh, I'll walk over and grab seven and eight off the wall. Uh, okay. I... Uh... Yeah, you grab bottom left and bottom middle. There's just recesses like in this wall now. Yeah, they're just empty slots now. You're holding two plates. Okay. I think I have it. Put it back. Okay. You put them both back. Christoph, so you're saying that everything should equal to this. Yeah, so these so these are I've read about these in my extensive studies. These are called Roman numerals, and they're from an ancient uh, race of, of half orcs that invented them, and they represent numbers. Back from the arcane wars, they represent the <laughs> arcane uh. numbers. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I point at each of the Roman numerals. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we have to make fifteen is our key code. It's our cipher. We have to make everything equal 15. So if you add those numbers up horizontally and vertically, so that it always equals 15 at the end of each of those rows, the door will open. All right, we'll, we'll try this on for size. The top, th top three row will be 618. The second row will be 753. The last row will be 294. 
should equal everything up to the little magical thing that you said it would do. Son of a bitch, he's right. Yeah, I know. That's not what I have listed here, but it works. Oh, sweet. Because uh, I had it listed basically um, what he built turned on the right, essentially. Um, but That yes. would have taken me an additional six minutes to solve. <laughs> My wife does Sudoku like a lot. Uh, yeah, it's called a magic cube. I didn't know cube. you were married, though. Uh, it's a, it's no. called a magic cube, actually, <laughs> and I figured I had a chance if I just threw math at Shane instead of a typical puzzle. I just yeah, slowed him gonna... down. Um, so as you put those plates into place, um, you hear a loud stone click, and the door essentially unlocks. I push it with both hands. You push the large uh, two-story doors. I assume space. it's a push door, unless it's a pull door. No, it's and push. Then you super push. Oh, you were right. Yeah, I used the help action yeah, to help do. push the heavy door. Uh, no, he's a big orc. He just pushes it open, no problem. Uh, um, so, yeah, you see the doorway, and opening the doorway, you can see... Um, <clears throat> let's see here. You, see, sure. you can see uh, a larger figure in like deeper into the room um, and behind it a few pedestals is where you can see or a few deuses excuse me from where you're standing I'm a deus 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 come on rub me on my deus how okay, many deuses deus uh, ex market. you see uh, two the, the figure and the two What's the, the figure the right. look like? Uh, sorry? What's the figure look like? Uh, it's taller. It's, it looks like a statue. You just can't see from where you are. Oh, I come closer. Okay. Uh, Walk so in marching order. Yeah, marching order is what you want to do? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Minus Henry. Okay. As you guys walk in, um, you go deeper into the room, um, and you see that it's a, um, a larger statue. Uh, do you want to keep moving into it? Or getting closer Perception to inspect check. it? I hate that you're asking me, but yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, you walk up to, uh, you see a large stone creature standing uh, nine foot tall, uh, covered in crimson etchings that flicker as the uh, torches on the wall uh, bounce around light-wise. Um, uh, it has one solid blue gem for an eye, and uh, the rest of the uh, creature is a gunmetal colored stone. Um, now that you're closer to the creature behind the stone creature, uh, you can see three deuses standing with items hovering above them in a soft uh, light. Uh, from left to right, uh, not that it actually matters, uh, you see a floating loot, a book, and a maul on their respective deuses. Hmm. I wonder which one I should take. <laughs> This is strangely appropriate. Yeah, I feel like this is oddly personal. I will go grab the mall. Uh, yeah. So you put so you put your hands on the mall, and as you do so, the doors slam shut behind you, and um, the stone giant roars to life and roll initiative. <laughs> That's enough for a night. This old man needs to pack it in. Next time, I'll tell you how they fare against the golem.